Hello, church family. I want you to know I sure miss you, and I sure love you. I miss seeing your families walk into the, the lobby on a Sunday morning with the kids running around. I, I miss walking into the sanctuary and seeing your hands raised in praise to God and your voices raised in praise to God. I miss that tangible presence of the Holy Spirit that we experience where God works in us and starts to change us. And yet these are unprecedented times. Now I'm gathered at my home uh, speaking to you through a camera and it just doesn't seem right. Yet I want you to know that this moment is shaping every one of us. Uh, you've experienced life-changing moments in your past, moments that after you've gone through them, you've never been the same again. The one difference about this experience is that we're all going through that at the exact same time. In 10 years, all of us will look back on this moment. And it just dawned on me that there'll be two different groups of people 10 years from now. Some will look back on this moment and it will raise fear in their minds. They will still feel the victimhood and the powerlessness of this moment, of being paralyzed by the fear. Others will look back fondly on this moment as the moment when they truly became alive when they truly knew God's plan and His purpose for them and they started living out that plan and purpose. And, and those are the people that uh, Gabrielle was talking about yesterday that just don't want to go back. They don't want to go back to business as usual. Well, the difference between the two groups is hope. It's the firm belief that God is writing a beautiful story in our lives. This promise comes to us from Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. This promise is not for everyone. It's for, for two kind of um, stipulations that we must carry in this. It's the stipulation number one of of, of trying to love Him with all of our heart, soul, strength, and mind. And number two, who understand that we're called for His purpose. When you understand those things, you have the firm belief that God's writing a, a tremendous story even in this moment. We know that in all things, it doesn't mean that God causes all things, it just means that He works in all things. That He can take um, the blemish and turn it into a masterpiece. That God can take the adversity and, and He can do tremendous works in the middle of this. Uh, I remember the moment when uh, I first said yes to Jesus. Ironically, it was about 50 years ago right now. My mom, she had an after-school Bible club in our home. It was right next door to the elementary school. And I remember during the 1970s, even before I went to school, I would watch on Wednesday afternoons as the doors opened to the school and the kids would run across the playground to come to our home. And then my mom would teach them Bible stories and we'd sing songs. On every single um, Bible club, my mom would ask little kids, do you want to say yes to Jesus? Do you want to follow him with your life? On one of those occasions, even before I went to school, I was the little kid that raised my hand. And I do believe that uh, more, more kids uh, were saved right there in the living room of our home than probably any other place in that little town. Uh, God was writing a tremendous story back then. And it was my first moment of saying yes to Jesus and trying to follow Him with all my life. A few years later, I was in, in high school. I was at a church camp. And there's a moment in the church camp when uh, the, the leader stood up and he said, does anybody feel called to go into the ministry? Um, I, I felt this adrenaline go through me. I felt a power that, um, like, yeah, I, I can't imagine my life doing anything else but following him with all my life. So I stood up in that moment. Right after that, he, he shared, if you feel called specifically to be a pastor, why don't you come up here and sign this piece of paper? 
I thought to myself, the last thing I want to be is a pastor. I didn't really know too many pastors that I loved or liked. Um, I didn't want to be a pastor for anything. But then this thought came, like, why didn't you go up there and sign that piece of paper? I did, and as I was signing it, I realized that God had called me. And there was nothing else I would want to do in life than to do what God has called me to do. A couple years later, I was at Taylor University. Um, there was a tough moment in my life. Things were, were not going very well at all. And I remember walking into a prayer chapel. And in that prayer chapel, just with the misery of, of not making good choices and not following God with my heart and soul, I got down on my knees and I sang a little song. It was, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. And though no one joined me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. I think about those three moments, like which one of those was the moment I gave my heart and my life to Him? It was all of them, and there are so many more. Every day I have to wake up and say, God, this is the only day that I can follow you, the only day I can do what you've called me to do. But those three moments were tremendous in my life. I was thinking back about them and realized that all three of them have one thing in common, one tremendous thing that really fits for this moment. In all three instances, right before those moments, I was really, really sick. One as a four-year-old, I was in the hospital for 10 days and didn't know um, if I was even gonna survive uh, having a surgery. And yet God saved and protected. And then this little boy says yes to Jesus right after that. Uh, another moment was right before my call to ministry, uh, I got a bad sickness that, again, for 10 days, I couldn't leave the house, couldn't do anything. Um, and a month later, I was called to the ministry. And then that moment at Taylor University at the chapel, right before that, I got a, a bad disease. And to not infect any other students, I had to go back home and was quarantined for a month. It, it's the one experience that seems so much like this one. And yet when I came back, um, God did a tremendous work in my life. I believe this with all my heart, that if I hadn't been sick in each one of those instances, God couldn't have prepared my heart to receive what He had for me. Here's the truth. In 10 years, you will be different because of this. You'll either be walking in tremendous more fear, you'll be walking as a victim, or you'll be understanding your calling and you'll, you'll see God at work. You'll see those moments where God softened your heart and He prepared you and He's called you and equipped you and 10 years later, you'll be living out life powerfully with hope. This is that defining moment. Uh, what I would like you to do is just Somewhere today, go to a private place, a, a quiet place, get on your knees and say to God, God, I love you. God, I want to do what you've called me to do. And then listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Maybe there'll be something that you need to surrender to Him. Maybe there'll be something that you need to receive from Him. Uh, maybe there'll be a word that you, you will even hear from Him. This is a defining moment. Don't waste it. I uh, also want to say in conclusion here, um, we've been trying to reach out to people. We've Yesterday I spent the day um, looking at the list of people in the church to try to call and connect with and spent the day connecting and yet barely even touched the surface. I need you to be the church in this one way. If you want to reach out, I need you to call the church and say, I'm ready to help. And if you need help, I need you to call the church and tell them exactly what's going on. We want to be here for you. And we want to connect those who have the ability to help right now with those who need help. Friends, it's time to be the church. Will you join me? 
God bless you.